Okay, now we're going to focus on the Premier League Summer Series coming to the USA for the first time ever, the inaugural tournament. Cannot wait to see these six Premier League teams play in nine games across the USA. Obviously, we've got Philly, Atlanta, New York City area, DC, Orlando, some great cities for, and stadiums for these games to take place. And Nick, you're going to be going to the games in Philadelphia this weekend. So how excited are you to be there and to see all these teams in the flesh? And it's going to be brilliant to see the fan bases across America coming together to witness Premier League action in the flesh. Yeah, it's going to be a, a clash of cool there. I, I think about Philadelphia and I think about the roots and I think about the Rocky statue and obviously everything that's happened in the history of our nation there, right? This is a cool place, a nice blend of history and a welcome to the U.S. moment. I am super duper pumped because not just am I going to see six Premier League teams and some of whom that we expect to be absolutely fantastic. How about Newcastle versus Villa at one point? But also this sort of interesting vibe that we're going to get from Mauricio Pochettino's uh, American's debut, if you will, for Chelsea. And we'll have faced Brighton in the first match of the summer series. And I just think for the series to kick off in that way, in such a cool city, in such a cool environment. I mean, since this tournament, if you will, was unveiled, Joe, um, weren't we immediately thinking that that the first game would be special? And they've given it to us in this sort of Chelsea and Brighton matchup. It'll be interesting if we get that halftime switch uh, of, of players. Is there going to be a transfer at halftime or beforehand? Because one of the ones we're really watching along the way has, has involved these two teams. Oh, it's going to be so much fun, mate. You're right. There's a lot of intrigue around these squads and these players um, in Philly this weekend. And, and Andy, what is your takeaway? Because it's, it's going to be great, right, to see, like we said, Newcastle, Chelsea, Villa, but also the likes of Brighton, and Fulham and Brentford There's a real mixture of teams who are, you know, mid table to top six, huge historic teams in England. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they're all coming together to show off uh, a variety of, of talents from across the Premier League in America, I think that makes it even more special, right? And just unique. Yeah. W would you guys say five of the six teams were kind of massive overachievers a season ago, per performed above where expectations were for them? Obviously, Aston Villa pushing for, for European qualification all the way to the very end, Brentford finishing in the top half, Brighton getting into the Europa League, Fulham uh, just about getting top half, Newcastle qualifying for the Champions League is really just Chelsea, who's kind of headlining the tour as uh, the, the, the world uh, giant that didn't overachieve last season. And so we're kind of in this interesting place with the Premier League now where uh, some teams have figured out how to be a little bit smarter, how to be a little bit more frugal um, and how and where to spend their money, I think, uh, and then sell those players on to some of the bigger teams who have been struggling in recent years. So there's, a, there's some interesting subplots, I think, going on with this as well. But just the fact that you get the opportunity as Americans on your soil in our stadiums to see some of these teams go up against one another. We watch it every single weekend uh, on USA Network, on Peacock. But to see it in the flesh is just something different. Having made a couple trips over to England and seen games in stadiums there, uh, it's just a, such a cool dynamic, I think, to, to bring these preseason games, which are very important, by the way. Like there, there was a kind of a stigma about some teams taking tours in, uh, 10 years ago or so, when they would come to the U.S., they wouldn't take it very seriously. They wouldn't play a lot of the big stars. It seems like those times have gone because preseason has been so much more honed in. It's so much more intense than it used to be. Uh, so it does feel like we're going to get some really quality football to watch in these games. Yeah, and what I love about it, obviously there have been Premier League teams playing against each other all around the world, but this is a tournament where they're all playing against each other, six teams, um, and I just think it, it adds a lot of spice because these are guys who play against each other week in, week out in the Premier League. So they know each other well. Um, obviously, different location, but I think it will translate that same vibe and that intensity uh, from a regular Premier League match day to a summer series match day. Uh, which new signings will be focused on, Nick? Because I know your Newcastle boy is Tenali or Tunali, should I say. Uh, <laughs> um, it is a huge, huge move for a Newcastle team, as Andy said, who, who made the Champions League unexpectedly, but have made an, another really savvy sign-in to strengthen their team. And and Chelsea have made some uh, decent additions going forward. I think most of the focus on Chelsea is on exits and how Pochettino is molding that squad, but some fun new players to watch uh, in the Summer Series games. Yeah, as someone who grew up uh, 
you know, wanting to win tournaments, it was Italy that I was watching. So be, because of my family background, Tonali is very interesting to me. But he, he's going to be overshadowed, in my opinion, by what Villa is going to be able to bring on that first Sunday of the tournament. Um, a healthy Diego Carlos with Pau Torres next to him. And Yuri Thielmans is the guy I'm going to be watching a lot. He's someone who we've seen do so many special things with Leicester. And now to get plugged into an Unai Emery side who knows how to use a player like that, I think Villa has – a real chance to stoke the entire country, um, really, but the, their entire fan base as well as someone who finished really, really well. And honestly, I, if they stay healthy and come together quickly, real potential to be the surprise package. I know Andy's talked a lot about this in our in our discussions. Yeah, Andy, do you agree with that? Any players um, that you like to look up? Because I think Villa, Nick's right, Pau Torres and, and Yuri Tielemans are just two top quality players that start for Villa straight away. And what a great end to the season they had getting into the Europa Conference League. And 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 obviously, they're only going in one direction under Unai Emery. So they could be the Newcastle of this upcoming Premier League season, it feels like. Yeah, a couple of years I've been on Villa now and just enjoyed the way that they played. But you saw that they were young. They were a little bit naive. They've learned and they've, they grew a ton uh, after Steven Gerrard left and, and Unai Emery came in and just made them such a tough team uh, to beat. And, and some of the, the results that they got down the stretch last season were just so, so impressive in the reason that they were pushing there for European qualification at the end. Love the business they've done uh, this summer, as, as Nick outlined so perfectly there. Be interested to watch Brentford, though. Kevin Sade with a really, really big responsibility. I know he's not new. He was brought over in January last season, but the transfer uh, fully executed and made permanent this summer with Ivan Tony out to miss the first entire half of the season. A lot of pressure on Sade coming in 21, 22 years old, a young player uh, coming over from Germany. How quickly can he get his feet under him in a role that he didn't have to play a ton last season? Ivan Tony was almost ever present for that Brentford team until the very final few games of the season. Uh, what kind of partnership can he build up with Brian and Bimo? Uh, because th those two right there, very, very dynamic up top, gave a lot of teams fits when it was Tony on the field. Can they keep that kind of momentum going um, is one of the, uh, again, subplots. There, there's so many little interesting subplots for every team uh, that if you really know what you're looking for, and that's why you're here listening to us, of course, uh, then you know you're, you th there's just so much to watch and so much to enjoy, uh, I think, about this tournament. It's perfectly timed uh, halfway between uh, not quite halfway, but 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 between two World Cup cycles and everything, um, and just the the accessibility that we have to everything, the news and how quickly everything moves now uh, to bring it here to the states is just so exciting. Yeah, hopefully, as I spoke to Alan Shearer about this, who's going to be stateside uh, for this tournament, he's hoping it's the first of many many summer series that we will have in the USA uh, over the next few years, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this touring around so many different cities. Um, across different states in the years to come. So it's going to be fun. I mean, when we talk about the, the best game, Nick, I mean, which one stands out to you? For me, it's Chelsea, Newcastle in Atlanta, the chance to see uh, Pochettino's Chelsea against uh, what Eddie Howe is doing with Newcastle and where they're at. Um, in Atlanta, big stadium, uh, great fans down there. For me, I've had that one circled on my calendar since the announcement was made. Yeah, listen, I'm biased. I'm going to be at the first yeah. three games, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Uh, Chelsea and Brighton to kick off the tournament to me is is just kind of a special moment. I think Brighton, um, they're going to have a little bit of uh, an angry mentality to them. I think people are kind of doubting um, it, it, doubting again how, how much turnover. We've seen it over the years, right? They have sold some magnificent players. Whether it was Kukurea, um, obviously people talking about Casado now. I'm looking at them and just thinking, how do they continue to deal with it? Where you know inside that camp, they're looking at this like, oh, Chelsea, Pochettino, we've seen them. We've beaten them. Let's just do that again. And I think Brighton is going to make a statement on this tour. Yeah, I'm excited. Andy, which game are you excited for most? Newcastle Villa, uh, just, you know, obviously a Champions League club in, in Newcastle, and, and that will be a step up, I think, in, in terms of just the readiness of, of opponent, because, you know, if, if they're, you know, uh, 
Aston Villa, as strong as anybody down the stretch of last season, you know, one of the three or four most informed teams down the stretch, and they've just added this summer, and so it feels like uh, that is a club that can pick up where they left off last season. We're, we're talking about Brighton. They might have to figure some things out early on in the season and in preseason, but Villa and Newcastle, given the way that they finished the season as well and some of the business that they've done so far, those two teams should hit the ground running and pretty quickly, you know, maybe not full intensity from the start, but, but there should be a lot of sharpness, I think, from those two squads when they face off. Yeah, there's so much to look forward to uh, ahead of the new Premier League season. The Premier League Summer Series is across the USA. Uh, coming up, there'll be nine games. Nick Mendola is going to be down to Philadelphia for us, covering the first three. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. So head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for all the information uh, on these games. We'll have analysis, reaction, video highlights. And of course, you can watch all the games live across our NBC family of channels, including Peacock. We'll have you covered. All the details will be on the website. These six teams are in the USA, and we cannot wait to see them play in front of packed stadiums and huge, huge Premier League fans that we have here in the United States of America. It's going to be fun. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.